Good morning, guys, and welcome back to Monday Morning Motivation. It's 7 a.m., and as you can see, I have literally just woken up, but and I don't even start work until 11 o'clock today, but you got to start as you mean to go on. And uh, fail to prepare, prepare to fail. So I'm up early. I'm going to be doing this motivation meeting. I'm going to be going for a walk. I'm going to be outside. I'm going to do some meditation. And I'm not talking about like new age meditation and, you know, too, anything too spiritual, but just focusing myself, composing myself, organizing my thoughts and just getting myself ready for the day. So I've set up this Monday morning motivation seminars because I know there's a lot of people at the start of the week, they get the Monday blues, you know, and it's like, oh, another week, another another day's work. But a customer said to me once, the harder you work, the luckier you get. Things get easier, things get better. And um, But you've got to put a sacrifice in first. And I thought, what's he mean by that, you know? And, and I think he mentioned it because I was mourning. I was, I was in work, I was busy, I had my own shop. And... Um, and I was like, oh, I'm working late again tonight, and I'm going to day off this week, and blah, blah, blah. And he's a, this guy's a successful businessman, right? The one I was cutting hair for, and he said, listen, mate, he said, the harder you work, the luckier you get. So put the time in now, sacrifice now, put the hard work in now, and you'll see how you reap the rewards in time. Because I think people think there's some sort of good luck charm, or there's some sort of, I don't know, get rich, easy technique you can do that can make you successful. But to be honest with you, the only way you're going to be successful is by putting the groundwork in and by putting the effort in. And um, and, I, and I think I'd already been doing it without realizing, otherwise I wouldn't have had my own shop in the first place because I was working at Builders Merchants. You know, I was working at Builders Merchants from leaving school up until about the age of 25, 26. And I was cutting hair, self-taught from the age of 14, 15. And while I was working in the builders' merchants, I was coming home at night at six o'clock every night and cutting hair till ten o'clock every night. And I just said to the missus one day, like, it's got to be an easier way than this. And I don't want to be making someone else millions every single day. And then coming home and grinding every single night to make a bit of extra money. I want to have my own business. And she said, Well, you've got your own business. You've got a barbershop. You cut hair from home. Why don't you just open a proper barbershop? Now, at the time, I wasn't qualified. So I didn't think that that was something I could do. So I looked into it. Uh, signed up for a, for a part-time college course. And then every Tuesday night, I was finishing work in the Builders Merchants at five, going straight to the college course, normally getting there late, by about quarter past five, but I'd stay there till about nine o'clock at night. And we did that for nine months. And through that college course, and through putting the effort in, cutting hair in the nights after work every single day, Ben and I know I had a wife and kids at this point, and I was still sacrificing all this time, which some would say maybe isn't healthy when it comes to a work-life balance, but... Now I've got three shops. I've got 12 barbers working for me. We're online training academies. My social media platforms are starting to do really well. I'm getting paid from them. I'm getting paid from sponsorships. I've just been approached to be the next ambassador for Gamma. All this hasn't been accidental. I've won multiple national awards, two times British Barber of the Year. And this is not me blowing my trumpet saying, I'm better than you, or I can do this, or whatever, or look at me. This is about saying that I got into the industry late. I'm a lot older than most people starting off. And I already had a family. I already had a really good career. And I sacrificed all that and, and built all this by putting hard, hard work in. So I remember qualifying, still working in the builders' merchants as I was qualifying. And then a friend of mine approached me and said, um, look, I'm opening a, a little shop in the village. It's got a spare room there. Do you want to put a barber shop in there? And it was a big risk to take because I had a really good career as it was. I was, you know, I was on... 35 grand a year, company car, bonuses and everything, working in this builder's merchants. I was going to give that all up to risk cutting hair, you know, to risk a business by barbering. But I am a little bit of a gambler, and I think, you know, you've got to be in it to win it. And a uh, very famous, rich, um, successful person once said, um, he who dares Rodney wins. And that's, that's a motto that I live by because I love the only fools and horses. So, um, I thought, yeah, why not? Let's have a go. Because I knew I'd established myself in the builder's merchant world, and I knew that if it didn't work out in Barbering, I could get back into that. So I had a small safety net to fall back on. But I didn't understand how my businesses took off so quick. So yes, I did start entering competitions after college. I started applying myself. I started stepping out of my comfort zone. I started embracing risk and taking part in things I never thought I'd take part in. And I didn't win the first few competitions, but I started getting involved. I started taking part. I started taking it seriously. Bear in mind, I had a family at home with children, you know, I had a house to keep. Um, 
And I started my competitions before I finished my builder's merchant shop. So as well as working hard five, six days a week, cutting hair in the nights, I was then somehow finding time to travel to these events, travel to these competitions. But by doing that, people started recognizing me. The newspapers started talking about me. Sounds mental, but I was probably working 18 hours a day, six minimum, six days a week. And that sounds unsustainable. But now I'm in a position, and I'm not even 40, I'm 37 years old, and I'm in a position to pick and choose my hours. I got barbers making money for me. I don't have to be in work 10 hours a day now if I don't want to. Um, I've given myself an opportunity to teach other people, to coach other people, and that has only come because of the effort I put in. Now, again, this is not me blowing my trumpet. This is me just explaining how working hard has given me these options. So I remember that my customer come, 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 come in, sat in the chair, and I was probably working till gone 10 o'clock that night. This wasn't 10 o'clock at the time. This was probably about 7, but I remember thinking, oh, I'm here till 10 o'clock tonight. I was working flat out because I was so busy. Luckily, probably because I'd won a few awards and my business was one of the first ones in the area that did online appointments. Um, I found a location that had convenient parking. And also I wasn't necessarily the best, newest, funkiest barbershop around, but I picked a location that was convenient. There was parking there, which was convenient. I had an online booking system that was convenient. And yeah, I was pretty, I was okay cutting hair. But I was new to the area, and there were established barbers in the area. So why would people want to start coming to me instead of going to the other barbers? But I was working later than every other barber. I was starting earlier than every other barber. I was taking my time unlike every other barber. I was given a service that no other barber around was given. And then people started talking. Wow, this guy's won awards. This guy's open until 10, 11 o'clock at night. This guy manages to fit me in even if I haven't had a book, if I haven't booked an appointment online. And people started talking. And then within a matter of months, my, you know, I was I was doing I was fully booked from nine in the morning till 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night. Sometimes I was fitting people in. I was doing that six days a week. And I had a missus at home. She was caring for my mother. My mother was living with us at the time. She had dementia. My missus was caring for her. We had kids. And it was probably not very easy for her. Maybe because my mother had dementia, I wanted to sort of escape from that environment. So um, I kept working hard. It gave me the motivation to keep working, to change our life and our circumstances. But the reality of it is the only reason why I've managed to build up what I've built up is because I put the hours in and put the effort in. And now I'm reaping the rewards. So I would highly I would recommend that, highly recommend that if you're a newish barbershop um or you want to open your own shop, I would try and fit in as many customers as you can. And as difficult as that may sound, and as hard as that may sound, especially if you've got your own life things going on, your hobbies going on. But that's the easiest way to build a clientele fast is to be available and to not say no to people. Now, I'm not saying squeeze someone in at an inconvenient time. You know, if you're fully booked up and someone turns up during one of your appointments and says, oh, there's any chance to fit them in, don't then damage your business by squeezing them in and then knocking yourself behind or damaging your next customer who then has to wait when they've booked an appointment. But don't be scared to work on. Don't be scared to fit them in out of hours because that will go a long way and it worked for me. Yes, it was hard. First 12 months was really hard. So I remember this customer was sat in my chair and I was knackered. I was complaining. And um, I wasn't helping myself. I wasn't eating healthy. I was probably drinking a lot every single night. Um, you know, I wasn't in the best place mentally. And I think probably work was the escape for me because I wasn't in a great place with the fact that we cared for my mother. She was dying. Um, working mental hours. I obviously had extra money. So drinks and everything else was more available. And um, I was in a very, very bad place. Now, I probably could have dealt with that situation so much better if I hadn't been drinking and if I had been looking after myself and eating healthier. Um, but I wasn't. But I still muscled it out. So it was hard. And I remember saying to this customer, oh, gosh, I'm working till 10 o'clock tonight. I'm absolutely shattered. And he said, listen, Ahmed, the harder you work, the luckier you get. Stick it out. It won't be forever. And you'll watch how things will get better. Now, I'll be honest. I'm not new age sort of spiritually sort of minded uh you know luck believing sort of guy it's not it's not really me so i mean i i i believe in a you know in a creator i believe in a god and i believe that that person no that god has given us a responsibility he's given us an opportunity this is my belief now this is not me preaching christianity this is just my belief and i believe that the harder you work and the the more you sort of prove yourself the more lessons and opportunities you get the more he trusts you with you know i'm not going to go into bible stuff but there's a parable in the bible that that talks about that like the more that he can trust you with the more that he'll give you 
So I think I just started proving myself a little bit. I started working hard enough to prove that I can take on these responsibilities, that I can do um, good with money and things that come my way. Because every time money came in, I reinvested it. So the first shop I opened, there was only two barbers in there. Well, to be honest, the first shop I opened, there was one bar in there because that was me. I opened a little shop from home and it was just me in it. That then got busy enough that I could train someone up. So I then moved to my mate's uh, business in town with a spare room in there, put two barbers in there. Within 12 months, both of us were absolutely fully booked. And I had trained him up from scratch. And I trained him up from scratch while working 14, 15 hours a day, while having a wife and kids at home. You know, So I had to sacrifice my time. It was really, really hard. But within another 12 to 18 months of having him, I had to go to another shop, needed three barbers, trained another one up from scratch. Then I opened a different shop in a different town, trained another barber up from scratch. So I left two in one shop. I went to the other, trained another barber up there, left him there, went back to the one, trained another barber up. So I had three in there. Then me and this other one working there. There's five of us now in two shops in a matter of three years. And those opportunities came because I was available and because I worked hard, because I kept turning up. Because I kept taking part. So it kept taking on the customers. And it gave me a platform and a clientele that I could build a business with. Now I've got a barbershop with six full-time barbers in there, three trainees in there. I've got a barbershop in Slashley with two full-time barbers in there. And I've now got a barbershop in Newquay, a new place that I've opened. And it's already rammed. And I've only opened it in December. And it's already rammed. So I think this, you know... <laughs> I'm not saying I'm being lucky. I think I'm being successful because I'm such a hard worker. And again, this is not me blowing my trumpet. This is me just kind of sharing my experience with you. Mondays are a hard day. Maybe you've had a slow weekend. You've got a little bit relaxed. You've had a few things to drink. You've had time to sort of unwind. Or maybe you've had a hard weekend. And you've been out drinking. You've been out partying. You've had a lot of things to do. You've been to see a lot of family. You haven't stopped. You feel like you still need a break, even though you've had two days off. And then Mondays come around again and bang. You're back in work. Now, for some barbers, they don't work on Monday. This is your Sunday, which is good. You know, make the most of it. But use today. If you're off today, use today to get ready for tomorrow. Don't use today to waste. Don't waste today. You may need to rest, but you need to prepare yourself mentally and physically. Go for a walk. Get outside if the sun is out. Get in that vitamin D. Compose yourself ready for the week to come. And prepare yourself to work hard. Prepare yourself to give your best to your customers. Because working hard doesn't always have to mean working all the hours in the sun. Working hard can just mean giving your best, giving 100% at every single haircut. And that will go a long way with your customers, and they will talk about it. They will talk about their experience with you, and that will also build a strong clientele. So let's get out of the negative mentality, oh, it's Monday again, oh, i got to work again today, or oh, i got to work again tomorrow, oh, it's Monday blues, bloody work, oh, I wish I won the lottery and all these things. This is your lottery. You can do this. If I can do this, you got 100% to it. I didn't open my first shop till I was 26. Um, and it was before barbering was popular. When I opened my shop, it wasn't cool or trendy. It was a risk for me to take on a, a salon with appointments because every other barber shop was doing walk-ins. Now, luckily, it worked out for me. But most of my customers, or I wouldn't say my customers, but most people that I knew said, oh, that won't work because men don't book appointments. They just turn up. So I had people saying to me, no, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. You can't do appointments. People just want to turn up. People just want to turn up. And I thought, well, I'm going to take the risk. And I'm going to take the risk because I don't want to be a barber shop that just does walk in after walk in after walk in, wait to never customers to turn up, spending 10 minutes on a haircut because I've got to rush them. There's another customer in the chair. No, I want to give 100%. I want to spend time with my customer. I want to give him a haircut that he needs, that suits him. I want him to realize that I care about the service that I'm giving him. I want him to, I want him to have an experience he's not going to get anywhere else. So that takes effort and commitment and hard work. But I did it, and it worked out to the point that in total, I had five barber shops. I had one in, in Swansea, a big city, and I had one in St. Dilo, another busy town. And my arm of the shop, where I first started, my, my first plant shop, it started growing so fast. I had to close my Swansea shop and close my St. Dilo shop and move those barbers to my Ammonford shop to, to manage the clientele because it was so busy. All of these barbers are now fully booked in my Ammonford shop. So sometimes being successful it doesn't mean having lots and lots of businesses. It means being efficient and effective with your businesses. So if you know that these two are costing you money and you've got one in the middle there that has space and because it's so big and there's enough clientele there, then close the two that's costing you money, move them barbers into the one and grow that business more efficiently. And I've, and I've been so much more profitable from doing it. 
Uh, but I've not been scared to take risks and I've not been scared to close businesses if I've had to close the businesses. But you've got to keep turning up and you've got to keep taking part. So yes, it's a Monday. Yes, sometimes Monday can feel like crap if you've had a bad weekend. Or yes, Mondays may feel like hard work. If you've had a really gentle, relaxed weekend, then you're not really quite feeling it and you don't want to get back into it. But start as you mean to go on. Fail to prepare, then you better prepare to fail. Be ready. Turn up. Give your best. Success doesn't come by fluke. Yes, some people win the lottery. That doesn't make them successful people. They may have money, but it doesn't make them successful. It's about the journey. It's not about the end goal, really. It's good to have end goals, and it's good to have you know, um, financial motivation, because that will make you take on the extra client. That will make you work a little bit harder to give the extra service or to upscale the cost of your service. But it's about the journey. Embrace the challenges. Embrace the journey. Embrace the fact that it's a Monday and you feel like it's going to be hard work. Fight that hard work. Say, yeah, I'm ready for hard work. So I hope Monday's going to be difficult today because I'm a warrior and I'm ready to smash it. I don't care that it's a Monday. Monday's a pussy. I'm going to destroy Mondays. Mondays are my breakfast. You've got to build yourself up and get yourself ready for it. Get outside, get in the sun, talk to yourself, get ready. Have a look at your bookings, look at your customers, prepare yourself and see who you've got in and, and think about how good you're going to give them those services, the sort of haircuts they want. And if you are a walk-in barbershop and an appointment isn't for you and you don't know who's going to walk through that door, it doesn't matter because you're going to be ready for it and you're going to tell yourself you're going to be ready for it. There's power in your words. Now, again, I'm not trying to be a new age sort of, you know, talk to the universe and all the rest of it, but it is true. It is true. You've got to speak positivity into yourself. You've got to push out all negativity and you've got to get yourself ready, get yourself motivated and work hard. The harder you work, the luckier you will be. Because think of the opportunities it creates. So the more people you fit in because you work longer, the more money you get. The more money you get, the more opportunities and options you have then because you've got more money. Plus, people will talk about you more because you're working so hard. If you're giving 100% in your services, people will talk about you because your services uh, are such an um, an important, interesting experience for your customers. You know, give yourself to some other people. Teach other people in your barbershops. Coach other people. Mentor other people. Inspire other people. Because then as your businesses grow, because of the hard work you're putting in, you've then got options. You've then got barbers who come to work for you. You've then got people who look up to you, who will want to come and support you when you open your own barbershop. Hard work pays off. Okay, so I'm going to round it up there. If you have any questions, please feel free to type them in and I'll answer them for you. But it's 20 past seven. We've got 20 minutes of good, motivational, hopefully some inspirational, but this is how I prepare myself. And if it's days that I'm feeling, oh gosh, I'm feeling tired today, I can't be asked to get up. I just tell myself, this is not about me. This is about other people. Other people are counting on me today. My kids need to see me working hard so they can look up to me because it gives them inspiration. It makes them feel like um, that they have a chance in life. When they see me succeeding for them, they realize that they could have a chance. That by putting the effort in, they have a hope. So I need to inspire them to start there. So when they be getting up in a bit now, they already see me working. So it motivates them and puts it sows a seed in their head that they need to work hard to be successful. I've got customers relying on me. I've got trainees relying on me. Relying on me. I've got barbers relying on me. I've got shops that need to be opened. So I have to be ready. I can't afford to be weak and I can't afford to be lazy. Because once you start compromising, you go, oh, I'll just cancel today or I'll just book today off. I won't go to the gym today or I won't go for that walk today. You've already started allowing the weakness to take hold of your body. You've started compromising with yourself and your motives. All right? So when you start feeling the negativity, when you start feeling the stresses, when you start feeling the discomfort kicking in, prepare yourself for war. That's a challenge. If someone walked up to you in the street and pushed you, you're not going to just, you may just want to walk away. But there's a part where you're going to want to take that person on and go, who, you, who do you think you're pushing? Or if someone come up and pushed your kid, you're going, to, you're going to be ready to fight. Well, you've got to get in that mindset. You've got to get in that fight mindset, regardless what your circumstances are. When you feel like you don't want to face a situation because it may be difficult or, you know, the customer's going to be stressful or you're, just, you're too tired to go to the gym because you were up late last night, that's the fight. To so feel that, to go, I'm not prepared to lose. I'm not going to lose to this feeling. And get up and fight it. And then you will succeed. But as soon as you start leaving little bits of negativity come into your life and a little bit of laziness come into your life, you will then become less of a person. And the longer you stand still, you will eventually go backwards because people will pass you. This is not just about you. There's other people out there wanting to take your customer. There's other barbers out there wanting to take your credibility and take your business. You've got to be ahead of the game. So I'm going to round it up. I'm going to just check any questions and answer them before we get ready for this day. So bear with me as I'm trying to navigate through this technology.
Right, okay, so I know it varies. So this is by Jake, a friend of mine, and a subscriber to the Barber Coach TV. I know it varies by different areas, but what prices do you charge, mate? Skin, face, classic, etc. Okay, so it does vary, but it only varies until you become successful. So while you're starting off, I always recommend being cheaper. So if you're opening your own shop, for instance, and you're in a competitive area, find out the average prices in your area. Don't go for the most expensive range. Even if you're giving the most expensive experience, don't go for the most expensive range. So if, for example, the most expensive barber in your area is charging £25 a haircut, but the average barbers are charging £15 to £16 a haircut, charge £15 to £16 a haircut. So, um, so for me, for example, I've been in the game long enough and I've built my clientele up enough that I'm the most expensive barber in my area. Now I'm in Ammonford. It's a small town in Wales and I'm also in New Quay. I don't go to my Slanetley shop, but I charge just £20 um a flat rate of cuts. I don't I used to charge like £18 a skin fade, £16 a gents cut, £15 a kids cut, sort of thing, you know, and about four or five quid extra for a beer shaper. Now I just charge £20 for um Skin phase or gents cuts. If a customer wants half hour of my time, it's twenty pound, and for a hair and beard, which is forty five minutes, it's twenty eight pound, and then for kids cuts, it's eighteen pound. That's basically my options. Um, there is a no because I've got a couple of OAP customers that still want to come to me. Um, I charge them fifteen quid. Do you know what I mean? I just I just look out for them and charge them fifteen quid. But you want to be looking at. But what I charge is irrelevant because obviously my experience and my journey is different to yours, and my area is different to yours. So look at the barbers in your area. Look at the most expensive one and obviously make that your target. That's got to be a goal. You've got to eventually be as expensive as him, if not more, eventually. But to build a clientele, you've got to be in the average range. Be in the average range, but give people value for money. So when they come to you and they realize, wow, I'm paying the same price as I'm paying maybe in the you know the foreign barber shop down the road. And um, but this person's giving me a better experience. I got more convenience. He gives me a better haircut. You know, um, he's a better person. I like his energy. So I'm going to keep going there. They're going to start telling other people that because obviously you've sacrificed some of your money to draw a crowd. You know, and that's hard work in itself because that means you've got to work harder to make more money. It means you've got less money to pay for bills and overheads, but you started drawing attention. You started creating um, something to talk about. People are going to start saying, well, this guy's only charging the same price as I'm up there and he's much better than him. Start drawing a crowd in. Draw your crowd in. And then advice someone gave me once was a successful business person said to me once, Every time you're fully booked for two weeks in advance, you need to put your prices up. And I thought, well, oh, I don't know about that. I'll slow down there, Charlie. But I started off at charging £7 a gents cut and £9 a skin fit. And yes, that was 10 years ago. But within 10 years, I've over doubled my prices because I put a pound up every single time that I was booked up. I didn't do it every two weeks because I was booked up two weeks in advance, probably from early doors. So I used to take appointments four weeks in advance. So when you get to the point that all of my four weeks were fully booked, I put my price up. And I say, I do the same for my barbers. Every time they get fully booked, consistently fully booked for three to four weeks in advance and people are struggling to get in with them, I put my price up. I put their price up. So look at who the most expensive is and make that your goal. Make that maybe a 10-year uh, plan, um, a two-year plan, say. And then go in on the average price range and then aim to build up your clientele first, become established, get people talking about you, work all the hours into the sun, get all the customers through the door that's possible. And then, Every sort of two to three months, put it up a pound, put it up a pound, as long as you're fully booked. If you're not fully fully booked, then you could potentially then end up losing business. But if you're fully booked and you know you're turning people away, by putting your money up a pound or two, you may potentially lose one or two, but you will gain more because you're in demand. So if you put in your prices up and you're not in demand, you're eventually going to just lose business over time. But I charge 20 pound. I charge. So when you start off, you do need to customers that do expect prices for services. You they will expect a cheaper price for for kids cuts. They will expect expect a cheaper price for um, OEPs. They will expect maybe a more expensive price for a skin fit. Just so start off with what the customers are expecting. Get them, you know, give them what they want to start, and then when they realize how good you are, when they realize how successful and how in demand you are, and how much effort you put in, and how much they need you because you're better than everybody else, then you can change it. And then you can do it the way you want to do it. So for me, I want to get paid minimum of twenty pound every half hour. I want to be paid at least forty pound an hour. So to do that, my set rate of thirty minutes is twenty pound. Um, I do sacrifice two pound for two kids. I do eighteen pound for skin fit, but I don't do many kids because a lot of my other barbers in the shop are a bit more, are a little bit cheaper than me. So most of the kids go to them, which is good because then they can build a clientele. I've already got my clientele. I don't need new kids. So, but for me, gents and skin fit is twenty pound for half hour. So I can do two at least two an hour, making forty per an hour. But I've also got 
a 15 minute service called just the site. So I've got a lot of customers that come back in every single week and they only just have a quick fade on the site. And it only takes me 15 minutes because I know they're here. I've been doing it for a long time. So I charge them £15 for 15 minutes. But if I get four of them booked in an hour, that's £60 an hour. That's really, really good money. Especially when I've got other barbers working for me and the, what um, what they pay me covers all the bills and more. So I make money off them after paying all my bills. So I could I could live without cutting hair because they make me enough money. So then every single haircut I put in, is 100% profit. Um, but I've got myself to this position because of the hard work, by taking part, by being available, by showing up, and by leading by example. None of you ask any of my barbers in my businesses who the best barber is, they'll all say me. And again, I saw me blow my own trumpet, but that's because I've led from the front and I've worked harder than every single one of them. And I cut hair better than every single one of them because I keep showing up, I keep taking part, I keep training people, I keep motivating myself, I keep sharpening myself. But it doesn't give them an excuse then to disrespect me. They all know I need to be like him. He's still the best barber here. So then they still look up to me. You've still got to be available. But having loads of barbers work with you, then you're never showing up. Um, you eventually lose respect from those barbers. So I'll just look at any more questions coming in. Uh, absolutely no problem at all. So just one of the watchers now just thanking me for my advice. Jake, thank you very much for being here, mate. Thank you very much for taking part. Only two of us have got up this morning. Only two of us are ready. Only two of us are going to smash this week by the looks of it, mate. Now, obviously, this has been recorded and it will be on the Barber Coach um, TV. So anybody else who subscribes to me will be able to watch that. So that's great. Um, but, Jake, I'm telling you now, by being here this morning, mate, you will feel better for the rest of this day. You will feel better for the rest of this week. You'll be mentally prepared. And if you need any extra advice, please, please feel free to reach out to me on Instagram. That's the best place to contact me on my Instagram page. I'll be more than happy to help. So let's sack it off today. Let's get ready to smash this day, my friend. And if you need anything else, don't be scared to ask. So let's be warriors, not walkers. Let's take part. Let's lead from the front. Let's lead by example. And fail, prepare, you better prepare to fail. But we are prepared because we're up early and we're ready to smash this week. So let's go. I'll see you guys again next Monday. Take care.